We are here to provide fun entertainment for ourselves and others to enjoy. We are not professional therapists, nor do we claim to be. All topics discussed are by personal opinions and our experiences alone. We are an open forum. However, we will not tolerate any type of social bullying, derogatory name calling, or hate speech. We are the only ones allowed to trash talk each other. Also, just a friendly reminder, our discussions are recommended to be 18 plus. We do tend to cuss like sailors with our minds living in the gutter 24 seven. We don't want anyone getting offended without any warning. Thank you for watching or listening. We hope you enjoy laughing at us as much as we laugh at ourselves. Hi, welcome back to Ladies Night Trash Talk. Um, we appreciate you coming back and uh, following up with us on this episode. This episode is specifically based upon uh, mental awareness and mental health of all sorts. Just to reiterate the opening disclaimer that we're not professionals. We don't claim to be professionals. These are experiences that we're going to be talking about are strictly our own personal experience through mental health and those around us that we know who have gone through mental health issues themselves. So, um, yeah. I volunteer to tribute to go first. <laughs> thank you. Um, <laughs> is it really thank you? <laughs> Um, honestly, uh, personal experiences um, of my own, um, a lot of people do not know who meet me, know, uh, don't know, I should say, because I don't know how to talk today because words are hard. Um, I, I have a few mental health issues that I deal with and that I am currently dealing with. Um, one of those is a major depressive disorder. I was diagnosed um, a while back. I don't know a specific year. Um, and I also, um, have anxiety that I deal with. Um, anybody who knows me knows that I am a social butterfly. I can walk up to you and talk to you and be like the happiest person in the world. But at the same time, if you watch my hands, I'm fidgeting with something of anything, or I'm constantly moving because even though I want to talk to the said person, I'm nervous. And that's just, that's just me. Um, through my, uh, depre uh, depressed disorder, de however you want to word it, whatever ha ways that you would like to adjust to it, um, for you to accept it yourself, um, it's just one of those things that either you, you just have to learn to cope with it yourself in general and, um, basically get through it with the help of others, um, I, on a constant daily, um, a lot of people don't know, um, I battle suicidal thoughts. Um, and one of the things that I specifically want to mention with self-experience is that it's nothing that anybody can change. It's, I mean, I have a happy life. I have a beautiful wife who I love very much and I cherish every single day. I have a supportive family. I have support a supportive friend group. Um, I have Jess, um, there are, I have a job, I have three beautiful cats, I have, you know, a beautiful niece that I love, I have beautiful nephews that I love, I have all of the above, but in the morning when I wake up, sometimes those aren't enough, and that's nobody's fault, that's just how my brain works, that's how it functions. Um, there are moments where I'm having a wonderful day, um, actually this happened the other day, me and Jess were playing and we were perfectly fine um, the other day. And then out of nowhere, I just went, I went into shutdown mode during stream and I ended my stream only like an hour in and you know what? It, that's okay. That's okay. Because there's just so much that goes on in my brain in general that I can't always uh, control the way that I accept things or control the way that I break things down. So in like my own way, my brain likes to just shut itself down. So that way it just doesn't keep those feelings going. So that way I don't act out on feelings and so on and so forth. It's like a defense mechanism. So I get quiet. I, you know, we were still playing video games. It's just my brain did not want to function. Being able to talk to chat, talk to Jess and, you know, anything going around, you know, around me in general. And, you know, that's, that's a really, really, really tough thing to try and deal with when you're, when you're having an episode like that, like that. So the best thing to do is for me to eliminate things that are causing me like anxiety, things are, that are just out of my control 
And so instead of just sitting there focusing on what was going on in my stream and worrying if everything was going okay or worrying if I was saying the right things or stressing myself out, I messaged Jess and I let her know that I was going to stop streaming. And then I just stopped. I didn't have any viewers, so I just stopped. I, you know, didn't need to say anything to anybody because nobody was in there but Jess. So I ended stream and then I continued playing with her because at that point is when I was able to actually stop and focus just on one thing. I didn't have to worry about anything else. And this is a different occurrence for other people. It's it's just a matter of how you manage it. It's a matter of, of what works for you. And the biggest thing to remember for me, I have to tell myself or, you know, my wife will tell me or, you know, Jess or my friends or my sisters or my brother. They'll message me and be like, you know what? You're not okay, and guess what? That, that's okay. It's okay to not be okay. And I have several friends that, that battle the same situation, and we all just kind of have to remind each other. And honestly, the, the biggest part about me getting through things is having support. So, which is why ultimately me and Jess have come together to create a podcast and want to cover this, because <laughs> this is something we personally deal with on a daily. Or, you know, like not just daily, but anytime, anytime it comes up, it's not always, I mean, there have been times where I've gone a month straight without any issues, no problems. I was fine. Everything's cool. And then out of nowhere, something just hits me like a, a ton of rocks and you know what? That's okay. That's okay. That's the biggest thing. And I mean, I'm currently still working on things. Um, so I mean, it's just, it's an adjustment. And when things change, you just have to adjust at least for me. That's how, that's how works for me so i mean that's that's pretty much about me and my mental health background um i mean i'm sure other things will come up in conversation when we continue throughout yeah. the podcast but those are just the things that i can think of off the top of my head <laughs> okay no absolutely and i can completely relate to that um i was diagnosed i think when i was 18 or 19 with pcos which also hand in hand goes with depression and anxiety. I'm more of the anxiety aspect of it 24 seven than the depression. And, you know, Bree said she, you know, she has a happy life. There's everything, you know, there's nothing in her life that from an outsider's point of view, you say like, yeah, I can understand why you're depressed or whatnot. And it's, you know, the doctors have told me it's a chemical imbalance for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And, I go through anxiety every day. I have a hard time going to crowd places or even some family functions just because I can't deal because the anxiety is so harsh and so I I don't really know the word. It's it's, it's very uncomfortable, it's very crippling. crippling. You can't concentrate, you can't talk. You feel very uncomfortable in your body. Mm -hmm. And you know, I think I deal more with the anxiety than the depression, but like she said depression just comes in and out. No rhyme or reason. Uh, this weekend, I went through a lot of depression to where I just cried. And it wasn't anything specific so much. There are a couple of contributing factors. But the way I responded, I would have said, wow, you're overreacting a bit. And, you know, you just have to deal with it. And I personally am on medication for it. And I've tried several. I think I'm on the third type of medication over the years. And Sometimes we have to change the dosage because sometimes it's better. Sometimes it's not. But, um, you know, she had her issue the other day. I went through it today and it was just everything. I don't know. How to explain. It's just like it felt like everything was like coming down on me and mm -hmm. my attitude and everything just changed completely. Like you're in quicksand. That's yeah. the best representative and, of everything. It doesn't matter how hard that you're trying to pull yourself out yeah. of it it's it's a struggle and you're not you just keep getting deeper and deeper and deeper and and that's why you know yeah. with us specifically with me and Jess it's we bounce back and forth off of each other yeah. because we're so similar in so many ways and we're so different that that allows us to be like oh you know what I can tell she's not okay today and so me knowing that feeling all too well I'm like you know what let me do something stupid. Okay, we're playing Grand Theft Auto. I'm gonna ram I'm gonna ram my car into somebody else or I'm gonna intentionally do something to distract her. Because yeah. I know things that work for me. Hey, 
if I don't sit here and be like, hey, Jess, you know what? I know you're not okay right now, but you know what? I'm going to crash this car to make you laugh. Like, the, it won't work. But if I do it suddenly or we're doing something stupid or uh, like completely yeah. off topic of what she's, you know, fixated on, then that's what happens. That's that's how we're able to bounce off each other. And I know means of distraction for me is what helps me. And sometimes, sometimes it works for Jess too. Yeah. But this helped yeah. blew me up today. Wasn't intentional, but she blew me up. And I literally remember thinking like, are you flipping kidding me right now? Because we had just gone through an attack by another online person that just kept shooting us. And, like, we're level one in five. So we're, like... a bulletproof vehicle. And and we are on foot. Yes, we have a pistol and maybe one other gun. Ho here has grenades, thank God. But, I mean, you know, it's just, like, that continuous. And it's, like, something I normally wouldn't be upset about. Or it wouldn't bother me as much. But today, all of a sudden, it bothered me. And I knew she didn't mean to do it. But I was, like, shutting down. I'm like, this is bullshit. I'm I'm done. You know? And And I even even told her. I was like, because, you know, like, I'm over here. I'm I'm laughing my ass off. Because from my point of view, it was not me intentionally. I'm not trying to blow her up. Our, our thing was we were supposed to be throwing these Molotov things at these little boxes and then they catch on fire and they burn and that that's they, the goal. That's what we're right. supposed to do. We're supposed to but destroy see, these through the boxes. <laughs> and from my point yeah. of view, it just, it literally, I see her in front of me and I, I had already thrown the Molotov before she went over there. So it's the box is already burning down, but I didn't realize that the fire would go under the truck and blow the truck up. So all I see is just walking towards throwing another Molotov on the other side of the truck. And then the truck just blows up and smashes her into the wall. Literally. And I'm sitting there like, and she's what laughing. The, um, what, and- what the fuck just happened? And then I started laughing and then I was like, you have to go on my stream and clip that. You, yeah. Because, you know, and of course I apologize, but you did, like just said, the, just... The, the point of it is it's, those are things, those are things that even, even if, she knows it's not intentional because if I was sitting there giggling beforehand and I go to kill her, she knows I'm intentional. We do it in right. COD all the time. Yeah. When we're playing Call of Duty together, she knows if I'm sitting there giggling or I'll be like, hey, Joe, it's nice butt. And I'll sit there and all of a sudden she gets shot in the ass. Like, that's yeah. just how we are. And so for, you know, me knowing that she's not in an okay place and then all of a sudden I'm like, she's blown, blown up and then I'm laughing you know, that's why immediately, immediately I was like, just, just, I, that was not intentional. And yeah. then after I told her, I was like, the, the Molotov set off, it blew up the truck, but the Molotov was already on the ground. I didn't do it. Like, and she, she knew then at that point that it wasn't intentional. It yeah. was literally just a, a game oops. And, right. um, you know, and then that's when it, it changed, you know, it really, it, she was like, oh, okay. And then we started having fun. Yeah. And the reason I brought that up was not so much just to, you know, tell a story, but the fact that when you have these issues, oh, I don't even really want to call them issues because, you know, I don't know. It just kind of seems like it's disrespectful to say, oh, they have issues. But these events. I mean, we have when, issues. <laughs> right. But, but what I'm trying to say is like when you're in that state of mind and you're depressed or you're having anxiety, which is anxiety was really triggering me today. It's like amplified, like 100% amplified. So something that you'd find funny or you'd be like, Oh, no big deal. In that moment, it's like you're ready to just be done. Mm-hmm. Ready and to slip your desk and throw your yeah. controller across the room. And yeah, and, you know, and it's it's just rough having that go on. And, you know, suicidal thoughts, I've had them over the years, absolutely. Um, there's just, you know, I don't know really how much to touch on that because, you know, I think we're both just kind of dealing with a lot of things in our lives with that type of thing lately. And, you know, we're okay. I, I'm pretty sure Bree's okay. I'm okay. Yeah, I'm, okay. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm okay. But uh, um, when she kind of started shutting down the other day, I messaged her. I'm like, are you okay? And she's like, no. I'm like, okay. 
And then I just left it alone. Because if the person wants to talk, they will talk. And they may not be ready to talk at that moment. But usually, you know, at some point they will. So you just have to be patient, in my opinion. Because you don't want to push anybody into saying something or talking about something that they're not ready to talk about. Exactly. Or ask. Honestly, yeah. ask. Because and that, that was a thing. It That was one of the first things that popped up for me and Jess when we first met. And I was having some issues where I wasn't okay mentally and, you know, um, or I, I couldn't remember if it was you or if it was me, but something was going on. It was one of us, something was going on. And the other person just like, Hey, look, I know you don't know me that very well. Um, but I just want to make sure you're okay. Um, if you know, and then I don't remember how the conversation went. I, I wish I did for the life of me. I wish I did, but I, you know, it was just one of those moments where it was just like, we knew, that was like, okay, it, that was the time to ask. Hey, is there anything I can do to help? Like, if you want to talk, you know, you don't have to talk to me because you don't know me. But, you know, I'm here. I'm here if you just want to vent. Um, we can hop in voice chat or you can text me. You can message me on Messenger. You can whatever. And, you know, I'm here. And a lot of people don't understand those words mean a lot. Yeah. Because the majority of the time that somebody is in, well, at least for me, when I'm in shutdown mode or I feel like, you know, like I said, I, I have I have my wife. Majority of the time, my friend Kayla's here. You know, she practically lives at our house 24-7. Or um, my sister-in-law is visiting. Or if we have company or, like, my nephew's here or something, I have people and I know that I have people that I can reach out to and I can talk to. But sometimes when you're in that moment and you're in that just that shutdown moment where you just you feel alone, you feel alone. And sometimes when, you know, there's been a time where even Jess, you know, like there was one day it wasn't Reese's. This is like, you know, like months and months and months ago. Mm -hmm. You know, I was I was just really in a, you know, going through some shit and, you know, it, it was really hard to try and iterate what I was feeling, what was going on in my head. And I just, I shut down. I shut out my wife. I, I shut out our friend Kayla. I shut out, you know, Pete, my friend Jackie. I shut out so many people and I just went silent. And it was just like, Jess messaged me and she was like, hey, I know you don't want to talk. I know you're not okay, but are you okay? You know what I mean? And it was just like, just knowing the fact that that's what pulled me. It's so, it's, and it sounds stupid, but everybody's brains work differently. What works for me is not going to work for her. And what works for her isn't going to work for somebody else. Or, you know, even like if my wife has issues or any of our friends are having issues or anything, you know, what's going to work for me is not going to work for others. And, but for me in that instant, even though, it sounds dumb because my wife was even asking me, like, is there anything I could do to help you? What what can I do? And I'm looking at her like, I I don't know. You I don't, don't know what to answer. do. And there's no answer. There's no answer. But then somebody messages you, hey, are you okay? And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, yeah, no, I'm not okay. I'm not okay. Yeah. And it's just simple little subtle things like that. Like, check in on your friends. Like, you know, life gets busy and life gets crazy and life gets crippling. Like it's, and it sucks, especially this day and age when we got COVID going on, we've got everything going on in Ukraine. We've got, you know, human trafficking shit. Like the world is scary. Like there's no other way to put it. The world is scary right now. Yeah. And something so subtle on just, Hey, are you okay? Means the world to a lot of people, even though to others, it sounds dumb, but until you're in that situation, and you're feeling that way. Then you're like, you know what? That does matter. That does yeah. make a difference, you know? So at least in my experience with other people who have issues similar to mine, that's what I've always come across. I always hear, the say, hear them say the same thing. They wish that they, somebody had just asked them, hey, are you okay? Hey, do you need to talk? Hey, I'm here, you know, just to be there, you know? Yeah. And, you know, it's like, like I said, sometimes it's easy for you to talk and, like articulate what you're thinking and feeling and then other times when you're trying to you know tell somebody in your head it's still it's like your mind's battling you like you're you say something like in your 
brain says that's stupid that's not it or like how you go about it you still have that constant inner struggle mm-hmm. of things and you know sometimes it is embarrassing because it's something so simple that you would think like why does that affect me so much you know there's no rhyme or reason to what causes it so and then you go into a crying episode and you're just like yeah. you don't know why yeah mm-hmm. I've had a lot of those where I'm just crying and I don't know why and I just continue to cry mm-hmm. you know and it's just I guess it's kind of like really seeing all those emotions and thoughts and just kind of like an outlet but I know when I get angry I'm sure a lot of people do this when I get angry I get quiet and I cry I don't yell like if I'm past that point and I'm not yelling and I'm just quiet just know I'm not okay and you can't say anything to me that's going to make it better at that moment in time. Yep. And I especially gaining with her it. and knowing her for so long, I, I've learned to be like, hey, you want to talk? And if she tells me, no, I'm okay. I'll be I'll be fine. And, yeah. you know, and then that's when I know, okay, don't push it. Yeah. But, you know, but still I give her a reminder like, hey, I know you don't want to talk, but if you need to vent, I'm here. And sometimes that's just that's just comforting enough, you know, because there are times that even I don't want to talk. And. It's hard because, you know, I, especially when it comes with, like, with my wife and my wife trying to be so concerned and try to be there for me, that it's just like, you know, sometimes I have to look at her and be like, you know what, I I just don't, I don't want to talk. Yeah. I don't want to talk, you know, I, I, because I, uh, sometimes my brain just goes like a million miles per hour and it's just like, I can't break down the exact thing that is bothering me. Um, or, you know, there are even times where I'm like, I, I don't want to hurt her feelings because what if it's something subtle that she did and it bo- it's bothering me, mm-hmm. but then, you know, other things start happening, start piling on top of that. So then something stupid happens and then all of a sudden the whole world's ending. Yeah. And that's that's really what it is to battle like depression and, and suicidal thoughts and anxiety. It's, it's crippling. And ultimately, we just honestly, I have to tell myself that it's OK to not be OK. Yeah. That's one of the biggest things. Like, that's one of the biggest things that I started hearing. Um, actually, just in, uh, I think, you, in my in my Discord, you were the one that said that. Yeah, it was a day that I was not okay. And I don't know where it came from. But I'm like, you know, it's okay not to be okay. Yeah. And so it, I and- posted in Discord. I posted on Twitter. It's just something mm-hmm. that was part of something for me specifically that I just felt the need to do. It's like remind people it's okay not to be okay. Because yeah, and- there's such a negative stigma on depression and people who have anxiety and stuff and mental, you know, health and all that. It's a lot of things are taboo still. I mean, we're 21st century yet still a lot of these things are taboo and I know a lot of people go through these things and they're not open about it so Mm -hmm. and I'm not sure if it's the same way with you but my mind is never like it doesn't turn off there's constantly Mm -hmm. something going on in my head whether it's you know something I happened to me in the past or how I wish I, you know, continuously talking and it's not voices. So, but it's my voice, you know, my inner voice saying, well, you should have done this. You should have done that. You could have done this, or you got to do this. You got to do it this way. And I want it to happen this way. And it's never quiet. Yeah. Never. It's, it's, I mean, I wish it was, but sometimes it's just, we don't get that lucky. You know, (laughs) I've, I've asked people, I'm like, when you lay down and go to sleep, like, go to bed to go to sleep, like, is your mind clear or are you thinking of things? And you have to kind of, like, calm the voices and, like, everything going through. And they're like, yeah, I just lay down, go to sleep. I'm like, oh, I thought it was normal to, like, lay down and just have these things running through your head. What's that like? Like, I don't know what that's What's like. That like? <laughs> Even when I'm, like, dead tired, I still... <sighs> Sorry. Oh, There's no. just That's not allowed. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just, you know, so many people go through so many things and it's in, on different levels. I don't think any two people are the same. I think we all experience it differently, but there are a lot of common factors, you know, and unfortunately, we've had people who have lost their battles to depression. 
Um, and that's never easy, but just knowing no, that I, you have somebody to talk to, just know that, you know, you may not know them very well, but sometimes that's even a better, because they're a little bit more objective mm-hmm. to what's going on with you, so. Yeah, I I know that feeling all too well past week. Um, yeah. I met an incredible group of friends a few weeks ago at Beyond Wonderland, and unfortunately, in that group of amazing people, um, we lost somebody. Um, I will not disclose details, but it's crazy because at one point I looked at my wife and I said, you know what? I feel so dumb that I'm upset that that person is no longer here. Like, I, I barely knew them. I barely knew them. I, yeah. I knew them a few hours and then we talked all throughout the week and in fact we we talked the day before I found out that he that he was no longer with us and it was just like I felt dumb because I was like I I don't understand why I'm upset because I felt like I didn't deserve to be upset that he was gone and yeah it's like I kept don't... checking on the other group, you know, I, ca- I kept yeah. messaging them. I said, "Hey, are you okay?" and you know, my wife even had a hard time with it. Um And it was just like, you know, and then another friend of ours that was in the group, you know, she was like in shock. She was like, I, I, what, what? Like, you know, and it's just like, it's just crazy because yeah, we met this group of people for just a few hours and anybody else on the outside who has not experienced this, um, it's, it's, it's just one of those things where you just like, when you instantly meet somebody and you just have that connection right off the bat and it's so rare. Like I've never experienced this before, except for like with the mute, a few minor people where I just instantly clicked with them and knew, Hey, you know what? We're going to be friends forever. Like we're going to be friends for a really long time. And Mm -hmm. you know, like that's incredible. Like the last time I felt that was when I met my wife and you know, so coming into meeting this, this like incredible group of six people, you know, like, it was instant. Like it was instant, even, even down to the one who lost his life. And it's just like, it, I, like I said, it feels, it feels incredibly dumb that I felt at one point that I didn't deserve to be upset that he was gone. But when you have that connection instantly, like I literally have felt like I have known these people my entire life. That's how strong the connection was. And they feel the same way. Like we, till this day, we still contact all of them. Yeah. And we we make sure that hey are are, are you okay, um, what's going on? Do you need to talk? Like or we'll just start sending stupid shit back and forth to each other on Snapchat, you know. And but it's just it was it was it was really unsettling, and it was really it was really hard because the hardest part about it is another one of our friend who was like his best friend in the group. And again, I'm not going to name names because, you know, I want to keep privacy for them. And, but they know who they are. And I, I, he blames himself because he feels like he could have done something different. And I had to tell him, you know what? You're, I'm sorry, but you're wrong. Yeah. You're wrong. As a person who constantly battles suicidal thoughts every single day and, and pretty much has some type of form of depression, you know, on a daily, it's just there's nothing he could have done differently. It, 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 there's really nothing. And this is yeah. the second friend that I've had that have, you know, has taken their life and there's no changing their mind because even in the first, the first existence uh, or existence is instance. instance yeah. I, I was stuck at work. I was working in knock shift and I had gotten a, a text message from, um, from a friend of mine, um, I can message message or name name him Ryan. Um, he passed away, but he passed away to uh, health conditions. But he was super young too. Mm-hmm. Um, my friend Ryan had messaged and said that you know a friend of ours, um, uh, they found him. He had taken his life, and I I was just talking to him. I I was just talking to him. You know, and um, back then you know he was me and him had this like type of friendship where it wasn't like we would talk every single day or like we would you know constantly talk at least four to five times a week it was we would talk when for some reason the other we had this feeling that the other person wasn't okay yeah. 
And it, it was crazy because I've known him since high school and middle school. I, I've known him for high school, middle school. Um, we graduated together and um, it had always been that type of connection with him. Like, you know, just, oh, hey, how are you doing? Um, and every time I would message him, hey, how are you doing? His exact response was, you know what? I'm not okay. How did you know? Yeah. Because that's the friendship we had. But even so, this this my point of mentioning it is this guy that I've known since high school, since middle school, and was friends with, and I would talk to, you know, and was my outlet because he understood the things that I was going through and the things that I was feeling. There's nothing I could have done to save him either. There's there's nothing because once once your mind is made up, there there's nothing. And speaking from experience, because personally, I, I have attempted to take my life a few times. Um, and fortunately, a lot of my family members do not know that. But yeah. I feel the need to mention it because not because I want my business or I need the, oh, oh, poor me. Right. No, I, I, want it for, I want people to know for educational purposes. Because maybe them hearing me being okay now. And had survived this, you know, then maybe I can reach somebody. Right. Maybe, you know, maybe they understand. And maybe maybe they think right now in, the, in this point in time when they're watching this that they are alone in the world. But then they hear me and you talking about this and and talking about our experiences that we reach that person. That And that's, that's the point of why we do these types of episodes. Because yeah. not only do we personally experience them, but we want to help. And the biggest thing that I learned from the friend that just re recently lost, that's all he wanted. He just wanted to help people. He just wanted to love people, but life is just hard. And sometimes we lose, there's no other way to put it. And you know, that's the hardest thing about it. And you know, I even, there's conversations that we've had to have, I've had to have with people, you know, that, when, you know, of course, when I'm hospitalized because of, you know, things I've done and they, you know, I have my fa some family members or even friends looking at me like, why? Mm -hmm. Why? How could you be so selfish? Well, right. in that moment, like, as I'm sitting here now, yeah, it was selfish because I didn't think about anybody else. I didn't right. think how it would affect my siblings, my parents, my friends, the person who would find me. You don't mm -hmm. think about those things because in the moment when you're right there, those are, it, it, there's no one. There's no one. You are alone and you're at the bottom of a pit of a hole that you can't get out of no matter how hard you try. Yeah. And honestly, it doesn't even matter if somebody had messaged me at that point because my mind's already made up. Right. And, and that's why I want, I want this discussion to happen because right. those are real things. Those are, you know, a lot of people don't understand that. They think that because they don't deal with it that they can just, oh, you know what? Go see a therapist. Mm -hmm. Go get put on medication. Go do this. Go do that. You know, like, but when you're in that exact moment, there's no, there's none of that. You're not thinking about that. I'm not thinking about my sisters, my, my brother, my niece, my, mm -hmm. nobody, because I, I've got a million piles of rocks on top of me and no way to get out because right. that's where, that's where my head's at. And unfortunately it's like that a lot. So it's, it's important for people. People to understand that you put you do put blame on yourself that you think that you could have done something differently, but you can't. Yeah. There's there's nothing that anybody can and to blame yourself. You're gonna spend a lifetime with that guilt eating inside of you, and that's not something that I know the person that you lost is gonna want to deal with, right? Or not deal with. That's the wrong. They don't word. want. Sorry, you. they're not gonna. They don't want you to to live life that, that way. Yeah. And exactly. You know. A lot of people go through this and like you said, your friend blamed himself, you know, for the other friend and, you know, I'm sure a lot of people do that. But one thing that I've had to come to realize is that if it's going to happen, it's going to happen in 99 out of 100 times, you're not going to find out until after it's done. And it's, there's nothing you can do. And they're not doing it to be selfish. They're not doing it to make you feel bad. They're just, you know, they're losing their inner battle, their inner demons. And unfortunately, you know, it happens way often more than it should. But you can't blame yourself at all because, you know, what if? Don't what if? 
there's, you'll just try, there's too go many crazy. What if. You'll go crazy. Mm-hmm. Saying, well, what if I did this? What if I did that? You there's, probably could have done that, and it, chances are it would not have even happened. You, made a, you it might have, have made a difference at one time, but there's going to be other times. Yeah. You know? yeah. And unfortunately... That was that was one thing that I had to tell you know my family when when it happened to me. It's, it wasn't the first time, mm-hmm. and you know until you, you understand until you're there, yeah. you can sit here and tell me to my face that I'm selfish. How dare I? Well, you're right. I am selfish. I I you're right. I am selfish. But at that point in time, I wasn't thinking about that. Yeah. I didn't think about anybody. So you're right, and that's why when there's a lot of There's a lot of my friends that are in those moments that are having that time. You know, yeah, I can sit here and tell them the same thing. You know what? You're being selfish. You're thinking of everybody else but you. Or, you know, you're not thinking Mm -hmm. of anybody else. You're thinking about yourself. How is it going to affect other people? But sometimes that's always, that's not always the case. I can sit here and talk to somebody until I'm blue in the face because I went through it myself a few times that... And sit here and say that life gets easier, but the bottom line is that the really harsh reality is is life is never going to be easy. Because let's let's face it, we were we were creating this world whether we were mistakes, we were planned. Either way, we were thrown out there and like, hey, you know what? You didn't have a choice to be born, but you got to go get a job. You got to pay bills. Yeah. You got to do this. You got to do that. And you know what? Sometimes there's nothing we could do about that. Unfortunately, you know, hard times are going to happen. And the 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 base of the reality is is that you have to find an outlet, find what works for you. And, you know, unfortunately, I'm, I'm glad I do have a support system. I, I, I have a great support system. Um, I find outlets. I, that's why I'm 33 years old and I play video games. That's my outlet. That's my escape of reality. Because if I were, weren't to have that type of outlet where I can release what is going like just stop the thoughts that are in my head because you're right you know a lot of people can sit here and say you know what you need to be on medication hey guess what i've tried medication Mm -hmm. and i don't like the fact that i don't get to be me because i'm not me when it doesn't matter what i've tried several medications i i've tried so many different antidepressants antipsychotics and they don't work for me i don't like how they make me feel they don't make me feel like my uh, my true authentic self yeah i feel like i'm suppressed and, um, and I don't do anything, um, you know, and for a minute there, there was a medication I was taking and for a minute I felt like I was out of that sludge and, but at the same time, I felt like I was doing it because that's what everybody wanted me to do. I wasn't doing something that I wanted to do. I wasn't doing things to, for myself. I was doing it for other people. And that's, the, that's the biggest thing you want. You have to do things for yourself, yeah. you know, as much as I love my wife, I love my mom. I love her more than I love my own life. But if I'm not taking care of myself first, if my mental health is not okay first, then what good am I to her? Right. That's the bottom line. That's and you have to be selfish sometimes in order to get taking care of what you need to take care of to make sure that you're okay. You know, and it's nothing against anybody, but like you said, how can you be there or help somebody if you're not there yourself? If you're not okay. Yeah. Exactly. There's no, I don't think there's any right or wrong. Well, I'm sure there's wrong answers, but I don't think there's a right answer for anything. Just what might help. See, and and (laughs) that's where, that's where I feel opposite. Cause you say, I feel like there isn't, I don't feel like there's, there's a wrong way to say things. I don't feel like there is because everybody is different. Everybody takes in information. Everybody has their own life, their own personality, their own Mm -hmm. way to adjust to things that are thrown at them. And, you know, yeah, maybe therapy could work for me, but that doesn't mean, hey, it's going to work for Joe Blow in the corner. Like, like I said, medication, medication might work for you, Jess, but it's not going to work for me. Like, you know, and that's the most important thing. So I don't feel like there's really like a a wrong answer to that or a wrong way to answer because honestly it's it's just about opinion it's, yeah and it's about your opinion i i don't think what i was saying was exactly what the way you took it is like there's no wrong or there's wrong answers you know that's not exactly what i meant by that um i was getting a little bit more of like 
hey, why don't you just go end it? That type of thing. That kind of wrong answer. Not that, you know. I don't think there's a right, right answer because an answer to you is not going to answer to me. Did you connect? Like, that's not what I was referring to. I'm, I'm, I'm there now. I'm there now. Okay. I, I, yeah. I took that. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, wait a minute. See, that's okay. But, but yeah. That, that just, like, settles, settles mm-hmm. both of our points. That, right. You know what? Like, something that just simply was trying to say, I took it completely different. Right. Like, I took Absolutely. it way out of left field. Yeah. I was like, and wait like, a second. Yeah. So you're, you're, <laughs> yeah. That's, this is right. the perfect example of why we want to do this podcast. Yeah. That's why we want our opinions thrown out there because, you know, yeah, you might be, you might be a lot like me, mm-hmm. but you're not. But we're you might be experiencing similar people. things. Yeah. But we're our own people and yeah. that's okay because, that was exam. That was exhibit A, right there. Right? There you go. You know, and the, I'm going to bring this part up, and it has it's totally left field, nothing to do with this, but it just kind of drives down, drives home that point is like, I'm an avid book reader. I love reading books, but I can read a book, read the same words that say Jane over here, or no, even you. Let's just use you that you can go read, ahead. and go ahead. we're reading do the I? same book. Yeah. We're reading read? the same. I mean, that's, that's still debatable, but um, we can read the wow. same thing, same <laughs> sentence, same whatever, and be given the same information. But what I see in my head is not going to be the same thing that you see in your head. Like, it's just, it's just going to be different. There's, n- I mean, I think that's one of the best examples I've always used is like, I can read the same oh, yeah. thing you read it and we're going to take it completely differently. So, oh, yeah. Well, I mean, and telephone, telephone, the game, the game telephone. Yeah. I don't know if anybody's ever played that in high school or middle school or at youth group or whatever. Um, telephone's a perfect example because what I can say by the time it comes all the way back around, it's going to be a hundred percent different because mm-hmm. it's a matter of, of how people perceive things, how people take things yeah. and how people really hold on to the information being told to them. Yeah. You know, and that's why I like. I really, really, like, it was, originally we were supposed to do this episode further on, like, further, yeah. like, on episode, like, eight, or, you know, I, right. I don't even think we have it listed in these well, first two months. I don't think months. we had it scheduled yet, because we're scheduling yeah, two months at a time. scheduled yet, but given and... the circumstances that me and her were experiencing ourselves, yeah. and given the circumstances of, of, you know, my, losing my friend, that it, it felt like maybe it was just one of those things that we should talk about because it is going to be one of those things where this is not just going to be this episode and then we're done talking about it. There's, there's, it's going to be one of those things that are always going to come up because things change. People change on a daily. And I know I change the things about me change, like life changes in general. And so it's just a matter of, again, how you perceive things, how you take things and, you know, how you obtain that information and, you know, and how, you just adjust to it. Yeah. Because that's what it is. And it's something that I notice a lot, like with my personal life, is somebody may do something and I'm like, yeah, whatever. It's not a big deal. You know, it's like, not, you know, but then if I'm in that state of mind, if I'm susceptible to going to that dark place where I have all the self doubt and, you know, negative thoughts going to my head and you know then that person can do or say the same thing and it's a completely different experience for me like it's Mm -hmm. either worse or it's better or you know and I really have to sit down and think it's like okay is this because I'm in this state or you know I have to remind myself continuously, like, well, they've done this before. It doesn't mean what you're thinking it means, you know. And that's, that's I think, though. kind of went through this last week. And, you know, I, I, I don't really want to get into specifics of it. But that's something I continuously battle. It's self-doubt, self-worth, you know, those inner demons telling you you're not good enough or why would so-and-so think that you would do so and so or that I don't know if that makes any sense it, it's, it, it it's, does it's it does I think you really just lost mental. your train of thought but it, it does make sense it's a total it mental really game and it can be 
depressing. It can be crippling. And you just have to kind of be aware of it. And unfortunately, I don't think some people are able to be aware of it because it's so crippling. But yeah, I, just, I mentioned that earlier that, yeah. you know, sometimes you're you're in that moment. And, you know, when I had mentioned about when you asked if I was OK and then I was like, you know what? No, I'm not OK. Sometimes you don't realize you're in that moment. Like sometimes it just comes off like you're having a bad day, but right. it's really not a bad day. Yeah. You're literally just having um, wh- however you want to call it, an episode, a moment. Um, inner monologue. Down, inner monologue. You know, yeah, and that's why we we definitely me specifically. That's why I look for outlets. Um, I look yeah. for other things, and um, I work on myself because that's the only thing I can do to make sure that I stay above water. Yeah, and you know, and because every day it is going to be a battle, and you know, every day it's okay to not be okay. Yeah, it's just a matter of how you go from there. Yeah, how you deal with it, how you handle it. You know. Yeah. And that's the the most important thing that I can, you know, I don't want to say advise because, yeah. you know, I'm not a therapist. I don't, right. I'm not, I don't have a license. Mm-hmm. Um, this is just things that work for me, you know, yeah. um, even, uh, you know, even with panic attacks, you know, I have a few, few people that, you know, have had full on panic attacks And, you know, I learned even with anxiety, um, I don't know if I told you this, Jess, so this actually might be new to you too, but I've learned with, with panic attacks and anxiety attacks or, um, even if you're by yourself or if you have a friend, it works better if you have a friend. Mm -hmm. So let's hypothetically say that Jess, you're having an anxiety attack while we're doing this podcast right now. And I just start spartan off like spartan off questions words are hard today they are (laughs) spitting 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 off uh, you know spitting out things towards you like hey name something blue right to distract Uh, you exactly and you just start randomizing questions you know name something you see um name something red uh what's the first thing in front of you favorite song favorite movie Mm -hmm. and it's means of distraction and if you're even if you're by yourself um it's not always going to be helpful if you're by yourself. It's not always going to work if you're by yourself. But what I find it helping for me it, when like the first couple weeks that my wife was returning to work and I was here by myself and I could feel myself getting anxious and I was starting to get deep in my thoughts and, and starting to go down that hole. Um, and you know, you're at that point where you don't know how to reach out to somebody, you know, and one of the moments I was playing with Jess actually, and I just sat there and I muted my mic and I sat there and I started looking around. I just started naming things on my desk. Um, hand sanitizer, screen, blue, Jolteon, you know, that's, Mm -hmm. those are things. Just start naming things, name colors, name anything. It doesn't have to be anything. Uh, BB-8, Dobby, calendar, you right. know, a pot, cup, you know, like it doesn't have to be until you start feeling yourself relaxed because it's just means of distraction. It's to distract your mind because the majority of the time what ends up happening when you start panicking or you have anxiety is here comes the breathing. You can't breathe now, you know, and I know for my wife exactly, you know, specifically because she has asthma, that's really hard on her. Yeah. So, you know, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but that's, You know, that's the thing that I always try to tell people, too, because I've seen it work multiple times and I don't even know where it came from. I wish I knew where that came from, but I feel like I saw it like in a TikTok or I saw it on something else. And I'm like, that's a good idea. And then my wife started having a panic attack one time and I just told her, you know, it's going to sound crazy, but I need you to answer the questions. And she was like, okay. I was like, don't think, just say. And she was like, okay. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was getting to the point where she's already having trouble breathing because she has asthma and, you know, she's already starting to struggle and I can see it in her face. And I just started naming things like, hey, name, uh, name five things you see or whatever, uh, name your favorite color, you know, or, you know, and slowly, slowly, but surely I can see her backing down. Like it was coming out and it was, she was starting to calm down. And, you know, like I said, it, it works sometimes and it doesn't work sometimes, but those are just, you know, there's ways to find it. There's, I mean, journal, I mean, journaling. Yeah. Um, I used to journal all the time. Um, find a friend, find a specific friend, one specific person, um, that you feel like you can trust, hold, trust. 
Why are words hard today? <laughs> I don't know how to English. <laughs> words are hard for you. I can't stop yawning. I mean, it, it is what it is. I it I is what know. it is. But um, it, you just the the most important thing to is just to find what works for you. Yeah. Um, and it's like I said, it's not going to be the same that would work for you. That's going to work mm-hmm. for me. Right. You know? And so it's just, you need to just find that outlet. Yeah. That's, you know, or that person, like I was saying, yeah. find that person that you feel you can hundred percent confide, confide in and you trust and let them be your outlet, you know? Yeah. Like, Hey, you know what? I'm having a really bad day. Can you come over and play some board games with me? Or, mm-hmm. Hey, you want to hop on GTA or, Hey, you want to hop on, um, and I don't know, do something. Or do you want to just talk on the phone? Yeah. You know, or, hey, let's go for a car ride and listen to music. Like, you know, those are, and like I said, yeah, that could work for some and it, yeah. it can't work for some, but right. it's just, you got to try. Yeah. You got to try. Some suggestions that I can, you know, add to that is like, if you don't, if for whatever reason that person that you rely on is unavailable or they're at work and they're not able to where they can actually, you know, do something or talk to you, find something that's going to help keep your mind off things like personally for me I listen to audiobooks or I crochet or you know the last couple of years I've started doing diamond paintings it's just something to keep my mind busy my hands busy so I don't have time to think or actually pay attention to those Mm -hmm. you know those inner demons or inner voices or however you want to say it I mean I don't think there's any right answer on what you call them um Mm -hmm. but just find something because I feel it's a little bit more important to rely on yourself to get yourself distracted because, you know, you may not have that person to be there for you. But I think having that person that, you know, you can rely on is absolutely key. But just have like a backup plan or something, you know, in case they're not available. Because like in the morning Mm -hmm. you work, I work, you know, with school and everything. And then even in the afternoons, you're busy doing stuff or you're going through your own issues Mm -hmm. or vice versa. And but playing video games, just find something that you can escape into. Watch a movie, watch Netflix, you know, even if you have to take a nap. Yeah, just to give yourself that break. You know, I mean, I know as a lot of us do suffer depression, sleep comes naturally um because there's been times where i don't want to listen to music i love music but there are times where i just don't want to listen to it there's times Mm -hmm. where i don't want to read anything there's times where i don't want to watch anything on tv and i'll just lay down and you know drift off so you just gotta find things you know i I would recommend suggest finding multiple things so you have backups. So it's not just one thing that you rely on. Mm-hmm. Yep. Like I, I do diamond arts. Uh, I, I, I'd like love jug- jigsaw puzzles. Yeah. Not everybody likes doing puzzles, but I do. Yeah. Um, yeah. If like Jess isn't, I rely a lot on Jess when my wife's not here. Um, and it, if she's not available, then either I'll jump in a game that I know that can keep me distracted or keep me busy, mm-hmm. or um, I draw. I'll try to draw, um, or I'll put on friends because I yeah. never, I never, <laughs> I never have a bad time watching friends. I think I've watched friends all the way through about a hundred million times, um, and I never get tired of it. So I'm so glad it's on HBO Max because yeah. I can watch it anytime I want. Or, yeah. you know, it's just, you have to have multiple outlets because like I said, if one's not available, then go to your backup, yeah. you know, go to your backup. Yeah. And I'm going to throw this out there cause it sounds funny and, but I have to throw it out there because I know it works for me and my mom is we'll watch reality TV shows or something or a drama show. Cause it's like something relaxing that kind of makes you feel better is knowing that there's people out there that have worse problems than you have or going through worse things that you're going through and it's publicly televised. I mean, I, that's kind of wrong, but my mom and I have had many conversations about that. It's like, it's nice to know that people, you know, they live like the keeping up with the Kardashians, you know, they have this like, like I can't even pronounce the word. That's, that's a hard word for me. Um, 
but they have these amazing lives and you know all this money and all these incredible things and yet they still have issues that you're like what i mean i'm like you have money you have money why why do you have issues i'm like why like it's just it's just something that i, I maybe that's just me i'm weird i don't know but no, because I know because I used to watch. Um, I don't know if if anybody knows this show, but um, the Real Road Road Rules challenges that used to come mm, out. That I um, watched. they now I have watched. what's called the challenge, and so they combined both those shows into like mm-hmm. a challenge. Man, they got some. They, they do some stupid shit on that yeah. show, and I'm like half the time I'm like, yeah, get there, get there, get there. no, fall on your face, fall on your face, right? like it's. I'm sitting here, I'm like, that, wow, that makes yeah. me a terrible person. Like, I'm waiting yeah. for some drama to happen. Like, because then I don't have to focus on my own drama. Right. Or, it's like, like the real world. The real world was a funny one. Yeah. And Jersey Shore. Jersey Shore, yeah, Jersey I used Shore. to watch because I'm like, t shirt time. It's t shirt time. And I'm like, yeah. For me, these- Laguna Beach, <laughs> the hills, the city. Yes. You yes, know? yes, yes, yes. I'm like, I love those oh, shows. Yes. And- Every night, I I have to. Even though they're staged, I still believe they were 100 percent staged. But oh, yes, I believe a lot be, of it was. Oh yeah, but yeah. They make fun of it on Family Guy all the time, and yeah. I laugh at it so yeah. hard because they have um, Lauren mm-hmm. dates Brian, and I'm like, oh, is, is it? Is it okay? That bestiality? Like that, that's that's a little weird. <laughs> but yeah, it's, more you know. But they, um, yeah, and it, but it's just it's just those things. You just it's just those things that you have to find what works for you because yeah. that's what it's about. Yeah. That's that's honestly what it's about. And you know, I just I want to repeat this, and I'm sure Bree's right there. Like we said, we're not professionals. We have no license. We're not therapists. We're you know, these are just experiences we've I'm experienced a personally. And, a, and a caregiver. I by no means have any. Type of, therapist in fact i went to massage therapy mm-hmm. school so, so oh. I, I have no yeah. i have no no degree yeah. in psychology yeah. uh i i briefed through it a little bit but not enough to give me a degree uh, mm-hmm. or you know um yeah. be a licensed professional yeah. this is just strictly mm-hmm. her Our opinion in my opinion in, Our experiences in my, yeah. how we relate to things how we deal with things yep. Like we've yep. both said, what works for us is not necessarily going to work for you or a loved one of yours. But, exactly. um, you know, just don't be afraid to ask for help. You know, that's, we have those helplines in both of, well, all, the Ladies Night Trash Talk Discord as well as our own individual discords. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and just. I have, I have a section specifically for all of the hotlines in my discord and then right below it it i have another one that says it is okay to not be okay or um you're important or something like that and it's just a place for you to be able to go in there and just hey you know what i'm not okay today and actually that's just was the first person to write in there and that was the other day to be okay because you will be Yep, and then a few others fall fall in line, mm-hmm. and you know, and the the importance of that section is just because sometimes people just need to say something; they just need to be heard. That's all it is. It's something so subtle and so simple that they just need to be heard. Mm-hmm. And so, of course, me it being my Discord, I went in there and I commented on each. Ba- I commented back on each one of them because mm-hmm. I want them to know that they are heard. They yeah. they are there. They are important. And even you know. You know, um, occasionally I'll go into my Discord specifically and to everybody. I will I will address it to everybody. I said, you know what? You guys are amazing. I appreciate your support. I love you guys. I don't know who needs to hear it, but you are beautiful today. Yeah. Like something subtle, something so simple yeah. and so subtle because, you know, just one person, maybe some, one person's just going to read that and you're just going to be like, wow, I really needed to hear that. Yeah. And you know what? Just did that for me that day. And that's why I went and I messaged everybody below that because I was like, you know what? That was great. I needed to hear that. It, it was, it, And it was something so subtle. Yeah. Something so subtle. But like I said, depending on what you're going through in life, that, that can mean the difference between something huge and something small. Right. And, and for me, that meant a lot. 
Yeah. And sometimes it's easier to talk to somebody online, somebody you don't know, that doesn't know the ins and outs of your personal life, Mm -hmm. a stranger, maybe you've never talked to them, maybe you have said hi, you know, because I know for me, I feel judged when I go and talk to somebody. I don't, I I worry about what they're going to think of me. And not since I don't necessarily care what you think of me, but when I'm in that state of, mind or you know I'm going through that I that's one big thing that I I do worry like am I gonna sound like an idiot are you gonna be like oh stop crying you big baby that type of thing and yeah I've never had that happen I've never had somebody come to me with that attitude you know when I reached out to those are the thoughts that are in your head those are those you know those that's your inner battle yeah and that's what makes it crippling that's what makes it that's what makes it hard to do things because I remember specifically uh, I was I was in a streamer's chat, a streamer we had in common, and you can't you messaged me and you were like, How? How are you just so confident in what you tell people? And I'm just yeah. like, I'm not. I just talk. Yeah. Like I, I'm really not. Like I'm I'm just you know, like there's, there's no, I just do it. Yeah, but she's see, scared. and to me, to me, that's something silly because I don't have that issue talking to people unless mm-hmm. there's like a million people around me, you yeah. know, like podcasts, you know, I've got people who are watching this, you know, that's nerve wracking to me, which is why I've been sitting here playing with my little duck this whole time, because that's my anxiety. Yeah. That's how I get through it. You know, I fidget. And, um, but for somebody like Jess, that's something hard. That's something hard to do. So we just need to remember that people are different, you know, Mm -hmm. and, and not to judge like I wholeheartedly. And, you know, I try to tell myself a lot of times, like, I'm never going to see these people again. Like when when we were at beyond wonderland, like, you know, my wife's like, I don't understand how you just walk up and talk to people. Or, you know, one of my, uh, my friend Kayla was like, I don't, I don't get it. Like, how, how do you do it? And I'm just like, I'm never going to see these people again. I don't care if they like me or not. Like, Right. You know, I'm. Where are the chances I'm going to see them again? You know, like unless you know we just connected instantly. Like I, you know, when I met the group mm-hmm. of friends, um, who you know, I'm just yeah. going to point them out. Little baby hands, little baby hands on my octa moody. They're over here. You can't really tell, but yeah, that was that was incredible. And then my little yes, my little yes. hands. But no. um but you know those it's just moments like that it's you're the way that i look at it is you're either gonna like me or you're not like that's just the bottom line i have personally i have nobody to impress i have nobody to impress i i I landed my wife i don't know how i question it every day how i got lucky i i really do because i when it wasn't until i i met her i had given up I you know honestly mm-hmm. and um ultimately my wife saved my life because I was in a dark place I was in that hole and in fact uh, months prior is the last time that I tried to take my life and it was it I there's no other way there's no to, there's no way to explain it I I was I was so far down in the quicksand that I was already thinking of ways to do it again Mm -hmm. because I was I was found and I was hospitalized and I didn't want to be. Yeah. But then I'm a firm believer in everything happens for a reason. And um, it's funny that I say that. (laughs) That sounds so freaking corny. Oh my god, I can't believe I'm, it, it's gonna be corny as hell. But when yeah. I met my wife, um, it it was literally like I saw a ray of sunshine. Like I kid you not, I was in a very very dark hole, and that's the only way that I can describe it. And it sounds so corny, but I was in a dark hole. I was yeah. I was a dark hole. Um, there was nobody coming in and out. I gave no fucks to anything in life. I didn't care. I. You know, and everybody's opinions just didn't matter to me anymore. And for a while, yeah, I was working. I was cool when I got out of the hospital. But I was already thinking about my next move of how I was going to do things. And then she came. And it's just so funny that the fact that, you know, one of her screen names is Sunray. Yeah. Literally, Sunray. And I'm like, that's the only thing I can think of, you know, when I met her. And there's, there's hope. There is hope. And it's just. It's just one of those things that you're going to, you're going to get really, really low. You just have to pull yourself up. Yeah. You you have to pull yourself out. There's, 
you know, because you you do matter to people. It may your brain may tell you that you don't matter to people, but you do. And you will affect somebody in your life if you are no longer there. Yeah. And you know, that's where you need to battle the selfishness those those I'm gonna say the voices in yeah. you telling you that you don't belong that you know that nobody that cares, you don't matter that, that nobody cares nobody you. would miss you exactly yeah. those those are not true and yeah. you just have to find a way to keep fighting because you do matter what you matter to one person in this world you really do and it's just you got to find a way to fight it you have to find a way to battle it. Because I guarantee you, video games, you're not alone playing those. You've, you're on a team, and you're, you know, um, unless you're, I mean, even on Kingdom Hearts, you've got Mickey and, or Donald and Goofy battling it out mm-hmm. with you. Like, you you just got to find your ally, and you got to find your ally. You got to yeah. find an ally to get you through. or And you have to want it. You have yeah. to want it. And you have to remember that you are important and that you matter. Because you do. Yeah. Everybody and, matters. And talking about corny, as corny as this sounds, it's so true. I don't care who you are. You can't deny that it's true. But you're the one person in the whole world. But to one person, you're their whole world. Exactly. You know? And you just gotta want to fight for yourself. And like Bree said, once she met Rachel, she saw some sunshine. She saw some hope. Of something good in her life happening. And that, you know, was that enough keeps to me going. keep her out of it. So, well, not that out of it. That keeps me going. I mean, it's it's like it's like you see that like one little thing. And then once you see that one little thing, everything else comes to the picture. Yeah. You know, like um, a camera filter is the perfect example of that. At one point, the camera's focused and you can see one thing clear. And then all of a sudden, everything else just starts opening up and coming clear. And that's what it is, you know, like, yeah. I, like I said, I was in a very, very dark place. Um, and nothing around in life was, was mattering. I, I found no joy in anything. Um, and all of a sudden here's, here's my wife mm-hmm. and, you know, and then a- after my wife, here comes, there's my siblings, my niece, my, my parents, my friends, my family, yeah. And it just started opening up. And even though I still battle, I still battle it every day. I don't battle it alone. I don't. Right. Every day is still a struggle. But I, I, I get up and I fight and I battle because I'm reminded every day that I'm here for a reason. There's a reason I survived. There's a reason that I'm here. You mm-hmm. know, and um, so I try to live my life every day as best I can. And as long as I try, then that's all that matters. Yeah. So that's, you know, the only thing that I could really suggest personally. Yeah. So, you know, if watching this helps you, that's amazing. You know, um, if you Please need to tell talk us. to somebody, we're here. Discords will be down in the description mm-hmm. panel. Um, and whatever, you know, you say to us is in confidence we're not going to share that with anybody um so yeah you can personally message both of us um in our sections in discord itself uh we have three uh three sections it's ask Bri, ask jess ask nay which nay will hopefully be here later in some of the later episodes but um there's interaction and we are constantly on discord every single day yeah so if there's something that you're just like, you know what? Hey, there's something in your podcast that stood out yeah. to me. Hey, can I get your opinion on it? Again, I'm Bree. That's Jess. Yeah. So just reach out. Yeah. And if, if we made a difference in you, please, please tell us. Please tell us. Because that's what we want to do this for. We want to do this for you. This isn't for us. This is for you. Because we've gotten to a point where we're, we're okay. Now, now we're good. We want to help others. We yeah. want to be there for others. We want to make sure that people know that they're important and your voice can be heard. And we, I mean, that's, that's what we want yeah. to do. So and if, if we have, if something me or Jess has personally touched you in this episode, tell us, yeah. we want the feedback. 
If there's something you think that we could have done different, tell us. Tell us. We want to know. We want to hear that. That's why we're doing this. Yeah. We we are okay to the criticism. We're okay. Or if you just want to say, you know what? Great job. Cool. Right. We'll take it. Or if you don't want to say anything, that's fine. Yeah. That's okay. Everything's okay. You know, you watch the episode and that means more, even if we don't know who you are that watched the episode, that means more to us than you, than you know. Yeah. That's why we're here. And like I said, we're not here to get famous we're not here to be you know huge content creators we honestly just want to help if we help one person our job is done right we've we've done our job with the episode and are we gonna stop no we're gonna keep going and we're still gonna be we're gonna talk shit to each other and we're you know this was a more serious uh um episode but you know we still crack some jokes in, in in the meantime during you know our normal banter so just reach out tell us don't be afraid don't be afraid to speak up because we love it we do we absolutely love it you want to hop on our twitches and talk shit to us please do it please (laughs) please do it because that makes it it makes my day when people can go in there hello there's a tree there oh oh hello there's a car there oh oh crap okay hey that zombie's kicking your ass all right talk shit to me man yeah Talk to me. Like, we love it. We really do. We we feed off of not just our ch- each other words. What are those? Um, we, we feed off of our chatters, our viewers. We feed off of feedback in general. So please, yeah. please come back and continue watching and, and just know that you're important and that we appreciate all of the support that we get from no matter yeah. who it is. It is it is greatly appreciated and that, you know, just, just remember to be kind because we we are super vulnerable. Um, I know personally, I disclose a lot of vulnerable and personal oh, things. Yeah, and I know Jess has too. And we're no, we're not comfortable with it. But there was a bigger reason why we wanted to do it, and that's why we did it. We did it for you, and so we hope that you you appreciate it, and that we at least reach a few people or not. Yeah, and you know, take what we say with a grain of salt. Um, take what you can use. And then what you can't use, you know, don't worry about it. So. Yeah. So we appreciate you being here. Yeah. Hopefully you join in next week with us again. I'm Bree. I'm Jess. We hope to see you back. Bye, guys.